G'day guys, uh, Adam Kogan here from SSW TV and today I am interviewing the man behind Channel 9, all those videos that you see on Microsoft's Channel 9 channel, Seth Juarez. How are you doing my friend? Not doing too bad, this is uh, weird to have... I know, I feel like I need to be asking <laughs> you questions, I'm feeling a little weird right now. Wow, you've done so many, so many interviews. And uh, I guess you took over from Robert Scoville, didn't you? Well, it, it turns out it was uh, Charles Torrey, who right. was the guy behind uh, Channel 9. It was, it was Scoville, then it was Torrey. There was a lot of people. And then, and then uh, they needed a new host, and that was me. They asked me about two years ago. I started almost two years exactly. Right. Two years exactly. And you have a developer background. I do. And uh, you do great interviews. You get all the great people. Yeah, and, I'm lucky that way. And you churn out so much stuff. Yes. And. I, I was really surprised because I see, you know, I've got uh, S, SSW TV guys working for me, so I kind of know how the process happens. And then I saw how you do it. You kind of one man band, got a camera, got no one standing behind the camera, you're sitting in front of the camera. That's right. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, there's two kinds of there's two kinds of shoots that I do. Yeah. There's the kind where we're here, like at Ignite, where we do live. When they are live, I, we do need some people here. My manager comes, and then my coworker uh, Golnaz, who's a producer, she comes and she manages this thing called the switcher. So that that's why when you see things switching back and forth, that's all happening live. It's not recorded. And so on those kind of shoots, yes, I need help. But there's other shoots where I have a backpack that has just my gear, and I show up, I pull the stuff out, I wire everything up, and I say, all right, let's do this. And then those are just me. Right. So there's a number of videos. I have a blog on Channel 9. That hopefully, we'll put a link up to it. I'll give it to you later, yeah. where you can see where I literally just show up, and it's just me. And how did you know how to do this? Did you get training? Or you just... no, no, I didn't know anything. Like My background is I, I have a master's degree in computer science. I did research in artificial intelligence and AI. And so right. I'm a machine learning guy. And when I showed up at Channel 9, my job was to actually ask hard questions, like real developer questions. Not like, hey, how do you feel about Active Directory? More of a, why am I implementing this? Why has it changed to this? What does it mean now? So real developer questions. And so when I showed up, they said, hey, Seth, you're going to have to go do recordings in people's office. And so they showed me the cameras, they showed me the equipment, and they showed me how to use it a little bit. In fact, the camera I have now is a Canon XC15. And my producer gave it to me. She said, here, Seth, use this. Just put it on auto. You probably won't screw up that way. And so that's what she did. And so now I just put it on my tripod, I set it up, and then go. And sometimes it's out of frame, or sometimes things are weird, but then we have an editor that goes and makes it a little bit better. Awesome. Yeah. So I'd love to get on to finding out what makes a good um, interview sure. with, with the, you know, all the different, you have a big range of things. But before I, I ask you about that, can I just ask, what are the best videos you've done on Channel 9? That's a, that's a really good question. The, my favorite event of all is Bill. That's probably like our yes. prom for Channel 9. We have right. a huge stage. We have people come on. There was one interview in particular that I did that I had uh, Anders Halsberg talk about TypeScript. And we had Brad Green, who is from Google, that yep. works on the Angular team. And I remember just asking them stuff, and it's weird, you know, I have Google and Microsoft, you know, like the cat and a dog, they're sitting there talking about stuff. Was and this I, before or after they implemented TypeScript on Angular 2? Uh, it, was, it was them talking about how they use TypeScript on Angular 2. Oh, right. And so, like, as a customer, Google is a big customer of TypeScript when it comes to Angular 2. Yep. And, and if you know that, you've been using Angular 2, it's all, it's optimized for TypeScript. Uh, and so what I did is I turned to Brad Green during this interview and I said, hey, Brad, what are some feature requests you have of Anders, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, you were going there, and he started asking about, well, we want, to do, we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to do this, and then Anders had a philosophical disagreement. For example, for those that are watching, he wanted to know about tree shaking. Why doesn't the TypeScript compiler do tree shaking, which removes stuff that you're not using in JavaScript, and Anders had a philosophical difference. He said, well, TypeScript is a language, not a build tool, right? And so right. it was cool to watch them have this philosophical difference in a really respectful way. But it, for me, it was neat because I had like the one of, two of the biggest tech companies in the world discussing a technology that was new and talking about the evolution of it. And I felt like I was there like a fly on the wall with history kind of happening. It was kind of cool for me. That awesome. was one of the best ones. All right, well, I'll put that link. Okay. Can you give us another couple? Uh, there was one more that's probably my worst. And my editor, uh, and it's funny because my editor actually left in this part. Very first huge show, very first build. 75,000 people were watching. 
and uh, Scott Guthrie was supposed to come on, but he had a meeting. You know, the keynote always goes late. We actually have a buffer now to make sure, we have a half hour buffer to make sure to account for that. And Scott Guthrie came and his handler said, he can only be here for 10 minutes, and which meant we could only talk to him for five, which meant probably three because we got to mic him up. And it was just like, it's not gonna work. And so they brought this other gentleman on and they, they put him on and he's talking about nano server. And I tried to ask, I'm not an IT pro, and so I did the best I could to talk about nano server. And during the interview, I realized that this was the guy that invented PowerShell. Jeffrey Snover, right. and, I'm, and I'm, an, I'm like, oh man, I need to add my first interview. And by the way, if you watch it, my editor left in the part. I didn't even know what camera to look at. I was like, what, what camera should I look at? And she didn't even, she could have edited that out, but she left it in there just for me to remember, you know, this is all happens live. Uh, so I sat there and I go to Jeffrey. I'm like, hey, so what can you do with power? And it, like, I could feel it coming out super slow because I'm like, this is the dumbest thing you could ask the creator. Power you, didn't, shell. you didn't know what PowerShell was for? No, I didn't. I, I had used it. I knew what it was. I knew it was, it, but because you know how when you're doing things, yeah. things happen way too fast and the, they didn't slow down enough. And I asked him this really dumb question. He's such a nice guy. He's like, well, Seth, that's a, that's an interesting question. Let me tell you, yeah. <laughs> I, you got to look this up. It's horrible. And it's probably my worst interview ever, but it was actually really good. Do that. Uh, six months later, we were at Ignite. Uh, you might know Rick and Joey. They had Jeffrey Snover on and they actually, I told my editor to edit a clip of that so they could play it and because right. they had Jeffrey Snover on. And then a year later at Build, I, I had Jeffrey Snover on. He was like on a Friday and it was really cool. He came on to talk about some news and I played that clip for him and I'm like, sorry about that, Jeffrey. I have since learned PowerShell. So thank you for, right. for instructing me. So that was my worst kind of experience, but it's really good because he's a super nice guy. Right. Um, you, you put out a lot of videos. How do you get measured? Is it just by views or videos produced or like what metrics go on behind the scenes? So my personal metric when I'm looking at this, obviously there's some other metrics that are put down on me, like how many people are watching, you know, are people reacting well. My personal best is if someone on Twitter says to me or someone on the comments says to me, holy cow, I just learned something really interesting. For me, when I'm making the video, if I'm sitting there and I get this, you know when you learn something, there's this thing that happens in your head, it's super quick. Yeah. If I get one or two or three of those moments during an interview, I'm like, holy cow, that's really interesting. Let me see if I understand. If I get one or two or three of those during a video, I feel like it's gonna be a, a really good video. Like if I've learned something right. new and, and I've been able to sort of repeat back, then hopefully people that are watching. And so that's how I measure success. If I've learned something interesting and I can repeat it and I can go and do something with it, then I'm hoping that those that are watching can do. Right, awesome. So you would um, go into different Microsoft offices mm -hmm. and guys develop cool things. Mm -hmm. Let's just say you go and interview someone who's just done IntelliTrace sure, or sure. IntelliTest or, or cloud load testing or something. And you're gonna interview him about that. Uh, what? What, do you do coaching? Do you teach them? Like often they, they know their stuff, yeah. but they can't explain it as well, or they're so, nervous. Uh, my job as a host is to make people that are super technical, that are not necessarily good at being on camera, be good on camera. Mm. And so my job is to make them fall into the right story. And so the way I always frame, well, I mean, storytelling has been around since the beginning of time when you see people draw an animal on a cave, right? And chasing some guy, right? When you see that, the first thing you think of, there's a problem. Yep. I wonder what happened to that guy. And we're talking like all the way back in cave, caveman times. The same thing for every story. For every, if someone asks me like, how should I talk about this? I always start out with, you need to tell us what the problem is and why I have this pain and why it's always in my, the thorn in my side. How can I get this pebble out of my shoe? It's, it's always in there. And once you talk about the problem and describe it well enough, the next thing you have to do is you have to tell us what you're doing to make it better, right? And once you do that, once you do that, people are like, oh, that, that can't be true. And I say, wait, that sounds too good to be true. Can you show us? And then the, once they show us, so you have this, you, you gotta state the problem, you gotta show why it's a problem, you gotta tell us how you solve it, and then you gotta show us how you solve it. And then at the end, you sort of summarize, like, holy cow, I've been having X problem, you know, I don't know, uh, with IntelliTrace, or for example, you, you showed one during your talk where you get a null 
pointer exception, you have no idea where it's coming from, right? And you, you showed the guy, and you, you just gotta hype that part of the story up, and then you can say, here's how we're solving it. We're showing you where the null pointer is coming from so you can actually look at it. Let me show you in a demonstration. And then at the end, you say, well, you know you always had this problem. We've put this in there for you. I showed you a demo, and then the call to action is, go and do it, or go find the download, or go install it. And so, if I don't know, if I don't know what's going on in the interview, I always try to frame it in that regard. And sometimes I do two or three of those at a time, you know, two or three problems at a time. If I'm doing a live interview, if I have right. to fill time, or if it's just one thing, 10 to 15 minutes, you get in and get out. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Well, thanks, Seth. Thanks for having me, that bud. That was uh, awesome. And this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV. Take care.